last piece of sculpture in a long series of sculptures, 42 years of sculpture, and everything I've ever thought about is going into this piece. And one of the ideas was to, to do a piece of sculpture that expressed a great depth of uh, symbolification and involved a lot of people. And in the process of involving the people, I get to go even further. I get to show people how I work and, uh, and watch them understand it and watch them be able to bring it into themselves and be able to express it too. Oh, this is great. This is a um, wonderful opportunity for everybody who gets to work on it and it's a great piece, a great idea Every, all the way around. Hank's kind of got a thing for piece by piece. I mean, Get your fingers on it, Hank. Just taking little pieces and just a touch at a time. This piece is a lot about process. So I think that um, the idea of piece by piece, just a little bit at a time, probably describes this process fairly well, I hope. The very calm inner nature that he brings to his work shows through the teaching style as well as the artistic production that he ends up with. Got some nice things happening down here in this Celtic. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching it. This is good. It has a certain, you know, dignity to it. It's very pleasant to look at. The manifestation of his art is a manifestation of that inner self. The idea of having a piece of sculpture in the city of Fayetteville, a public sculpture, like other places do, uh, is a very important idea. We are a sophisticated community. We're a very small town, and we're in Arkansas. And Arkansas has not developed its consciousness to the point where it is automatic that we will include public works of art in public projects. It has to be forced. So I decided to make a statement. We need art in public. Very clear. And, you know, it hit a, a note. It, 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 it rang a bell. It, it, uh, it's a very uh, attractive concept, and I hope it's going to be the beginning of much understanding that we need to have art in public. The armature is a, a piece of steel. It's a, it's, it's a complex chunk of steel that holds up the clay. It's a 10 foot by 10 foot sphere on a 12 inch pipe that spins on 39 one inch bearings. Sits on uh, two pieces of 14 inch I-beam channel welded together in an X pattern. It's a nice accomplishment. <laughs> wow, I made a 10 foot sphere that spins. Well, there are many levels of meaning. The first level is the level of the sphere. And, and that's what we're working on now, is, 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 the, is the sphere as a, an expression of some sort of universality. And the sphere is, is meant to, to speak about the spiritual nature, that outward moving 
energy. I really like working in clay. <laughs> Why? Because it's so sexy. It's something to do with the earth. And the earth is a sphere. But it isn't a perfect sphere. It's formed in many, I mean, the parts of it that are spherical are formed in many, many different ways. And uh, continents move and shapes change and seas fill in spaces. Tectonic plates start thrashing movements and, and uh, piece, parts of it get lifted up. But every place on it is an expression of the earth. And that's what I want. Every place on this thing to be an expression of the earth. building the languages on the surface of the sculpture as if they were constructions, as if they were buildings. Uh, and I have, at this point, almost a hundred translations of the peace prayer, May Peace Prevail on Earth. I'm working on Hopi right now, and it's in a really elegant typeface. The basic method is Hank's method. You know, this is his way of doing this. You start out with the little bitty hunks that you put on and um, rough out the, the, the shape and the contours of that, that letter form, but then very slowly build it up. I'll tell you what, you go and walk around and see where you want to place it. Some place, you know, down in the lower corner, there's a lot of space there. And all the way around. How are you going to do the crossover between the Chinese and the Tibetan? Mine's going to be slightly higher. That's what I was wondering. It was going to be. This going to be interesting. Yeah, definitely. To tell you the truth, this piece is telling me what to do. This piece is explaining itself to me as it goes along. No, I don't like that. Even included in the idea of peace has got to be somehow or other the idea of conflict. That conflicts, in order to find peace, have to be resolved. Well, I like this. I don't know why it belongs there, but I like it there. And also, it splits the, the Korean language, it's split in the middle and moves that way at the top and this way at the bottom, just like North and South Korea. Yeah, and, and this is strictly an intuitive decision. It's the, it seems to fit right. The other languages are going on North-South uh, movements too, and this one is going in a spot that is a chaotic region. This spot is a region where it is indeterminate exactly what those forms are doing. And so I'm placing the Korean there so that it splits it in half. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And that there's, nothing, there's nothing vertical in that direction. Nothing right? vertical at, the, at all there. And why not? It seems so logical. Yeah. It, just, it does not look right over there. It's an interesting spot for it. So have you figured out what happens there yet? I don't know, but that's why I want that <laughs> somehow or other. That's what Korea is That's what it's about to do. Yeah. So once you build the clay model the way you want it, then you take a mold, and in this case it will be a rubber mold, um, a flexible rubber mold.
so split though. Seven more to do on this side, on this level. In that mold, you make what are known as casting patterns. These are three eighths of an inch thick sheets of plaster that are this, the shape on the outside of the sculpture. And we'll make about a series of about 20, 25 patterns which will fit together in the sphere. What they're doing here basically is layering in reinforced fiberglass material which is saturated with plaster. And the um, uh, we build up layers, I think five layers, three of the veil, which is very, very thin fiberglass, and two of the woven fiber. Uh, the veil is, is thinner and so it takes the detail much better. And the, uh, the fiberglass mat behind it, the woven mat behind it, uh, gives us reinforcement, more reinforcement. Then we'll take those patterns into the foundry, which is next door, right in the same building, and we'll cast them in bronze in sand molds, each one at a time. The sand is a, a mixture of clay, oil, and, and sand. And it, it sticks together. When you pick up a heap of this sand and squeeze it, it'll make an impression of the inside of your hand. We'll pack sand against the, the positive impression that we took from the, the original clay work. have a good impression, we'll remove, the, we'll pick up the sand, the sand is going to be solid, packed real tight, and take out the plastic positive and put the sand mold back together again and there will be a hole inside the sand mold, which is the shape of that plastic uh, impression. And then we'll fill that with bronze.
close enough for arc. So-so, it could have been a lot nicer. Everybody was a little, uh, we should have been paying more attention. Two cold metals hit. We didn't get any of that. It all looks real hot. It looks like we got hot metal in and top. And when it's cool, we'll pop it out of the mold and clean it up and then put it into position to be welded together back into the original shape.
you see it as being the beginning of an idea to bring public sculpture or to bring public artwork into the community, but I hope it, I hope it, uh, it looks to expand the idea of public sculpture. The statues in the park of dead heroes are one thing, but works of contemplation and meditation and works that are not completely useful except as meditative objects and spiritually productive objects. Those are what I'd like to see this thing do. I mean, she's enjoying the sunshine. You're telling me enjoying the sunshine a lot. Uh-uh. <laughs> We already have a consciousness that says we need memorials. This isn't a memorial. This is a work that looks to the future. This is a work that looks to the spirit. That's what I'd like to see this being a progenitor for. May peace prevail on earth. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Hank Kaminsky. The speech goes this way. Art is an essential part of our lives. It says every one of us. It's like breathing or moving around. If we don't do it, I'm convinced that we will die. If you have a gift of legs, the ultimate form of expression is to dance. If you can dream and you know how to use language, then you will be a poet. If you have the gift of community, then the ultimate form of expression is art in public places. Some people will see will see it on, on, on the simplest level of all. You know, it's a big ball with water flowing over it. Oh, how nice. And some people will see it as an aspiration of a whole community for peace. 
beautiful place. And I don't know what else people will see as we'll see. Thank you so much for coming.